you you spoke about young people. And I just want to segue into you had the opportunity to work with two young ladies, Tia and Tamara. Mara. Uh, my babies, I love them to death. See, I'm close how, to how, them and Regina. It's not, and that I didn't force that. That's the way it is. But, oh, God, I love them. They got great families, you know. And they're going through their life. Look at it. That's why I say sacrifice. That's what I mean by sacrifice. And it happens to everybody. Sometimes your job is more important than your personal life. And only because you love it so much. But when you get home, you got to put the time in there, too. You know, so mm -hmm. I, I applaud it. And uh, they, uh, I just like seeing them when they develop on their own. They become so strong and and they turn around and they can help you, you know, and enlighten you about what's going on and still have a need. You know, can you help me with this? I, I love it. I didn't used to be that way in terms of uh, empathy. I'm just learning empathy. That's my quest. What do you mean you didn't used to have empathy? Well, I can see somebody struggling and go through something and go, no, that's them. They're like people do. But I can see the, the pain now that people go through and why it's, you can see why somebody, somebody would make bad choices. And the, the pandemic, like I said, I don't want to talk about it, but you can see the loneliness in people. Even when they were married, living with someone, you can see that that pressure of having to be together and then coming back out, everybody ain't coming back. You know, they're not crazy, but they've been isolated in a way and you get socialization skills are acquired and they're acquired through people. And mm -hmm. working remotely might sound very good, but sometimes you need to get out and get in the mix, you know, and the balance is not right uh, coming back out. You look like you're doing okay and I'm doing okay in terms of getting back out in the mix. I mean, I'm only talking to you because you... You was nice about it, but um, <laughs> no, really, it makes a difference in your people skills and world skills. But I have empathy. I can see the struggle. I didn't used yeah. to. Yeah, I didn't take the time because I didn't feel it. But now I can see why some people are going through, you know, some tough times up here. They mm -hmm, may have mm -hmm. the money. You look at them, oh, they're married. They're happy. You don't know their life. You know, you don't see it coming. You who? Who knows? So now I, I, I don't judge and I don't throw no stones. You know, and you see people drinking and doing drugs or whatever. I don't throw stones at that because for the grace of God, you know, but you try there to help you go. and understand homelessness. I don't even get into it, but we used to call them bums in New York. Remember? That was a bum. Remember years ago? Yeah. That was a bum. That Absolutely. Was a bum. Absolutely. No, no, not now. There are real struggles. You can't dismiss it. It's here to stay. And the Bible says the poor will always be with us, and they will. So empathy. You know, I don't just look and go, what is that? Uh-uh. Try to see if you can help somewhere along the way at, you know, not just by giving money, but understanding. So that's my challenge. You know, I, I, I think you just said a mouthful, and I think the world that we live in um, with so much going on, you you almost don't have a chance to process anymore because one, the minute one world event takes place, it's something two days later that's going on. And I think we all can learn from what you just said, just to have a little more empathy because you don't know what people are going through in this world. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You, and, you truly and, don't. And know that it really, this too shall pass. With all we got going on, you can still... Uh, Human beings survive. We're very resilient and creative. We are. Uh -huh. We are. We've come through some terrible stuff. I was in New York for 9-11. I'll never forget that day. So New York is a tough. L.A. is different from New York, and I always do think about, could I live in New York now? I can't because I'm too soft now. I'm soft. <laughs> I don't know what I'd get into there. I know I'd, I'd probably be, uh, oh, I'd be run over because... I, I ain't fast enough for New York now, you know, but I love it when I come. But I can see the differences in our people's, you know, livelihoods. Mm -hmm. And it's fun mm -hmm. to see people growing. And we're go we're gonna we'll get back. We're not gonna get to where we were before the pandemic. Not for me. Not in ten years, but a good two more years, then maybe we'll be we'll be better. But right now, people are still like that. You know? Mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. it. 
you know, and they live together or whatever. And it's like, oh, friendships get broken up. It's, but there's light on the other side. I can see it. And um, this is why you're here and I'm here, to provide, for lack of a better word, entertainment. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, um, I want to I want to talk because you you mentioned how you used to look at sitcoms, but you turned out to to, to nineteen ninety four, the premiere Sister Sister. You turned out to, you 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 right back on another even bigger sitcom. Yes, and it is. It's did most did you take it because of they? It's raining money right now. Or by the time you left two two seven, you were this ain't bad. I I I can do another sitcom. No, and not because lightning doesn't strike twice in those days. I mean, you got one. Some people go from show to show to show, but to have that kind of level of success, oh no, I don't know. I didn't work. I don't see. I can't even remember. I didn't work for a while, but I was. I was doing theater and I was doing plays. So I I know how to hustle. I'm a hustler. From New York, yeah, I, I wasn't scared. But you think, oh, I'll never have another job. And that's how actors are anyway. It's like, I'll never work again. But I don't have that fear now at all, you know, because you know your brand. Once you know your brand, like I could tell, I don't know you very well, but I can tell you know your brand, you mm-hmm. know. you like Stephen A. Smith or whatever. It's like, I know this is what I do, you know. So now you probably get another challenge and, and do something else in addition. So that... That's the word, competitive, meaning I can do this and I can do this. Like, who's my hero? If you ask me who my hero is, Childish Gambino. Donald Glover, he's a renaissance man. Really? See, see, that's what I'm talking. You are so tapped in. My God. But look at him. He's a renaissance man. He does it all He really is. Well. Wait, for years. But he does it well. They should do a documentary on him. I mean, where does that come from? That's what I said. He's competitive with himself. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and he could, he does it. He's brilliant. So that's my my hero. I'm you know I'm just putting a label on the when I say, when I say that. So that's what I. If I could do more, I would. But I, I can't concentrate on everything. I have to have one thing ahead of me. I don't like multiple things going on. It makes me a little schizophrenic. And maybe I am. Okay. You know. <laughs> so so what was your motivation for taking that um sitcom? Um. I got it. They offered it to me. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be a mom. I was still sexy. I was like, you, once you become a mom, you don't get no sex. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I was again it. Say not against it, again it. I was like, oh, oh mm, what about money? Then I met the girls and I loved them. Oh, instantly. I had met them earlier before we got this show when they were 13 through another friend of mine. So I knew them, but I didn't know them. And they were wonderful and cool. And they stayed, they were authentic. They stayed themselves. They didn't become strong family, mother and father, brothers. Oh, tight with all of them, the whole family. Or well, maybe not the mother, because she a sergeant. She was a Marine. I don't play with mm. her. She don't play. But um, it, it, it just enveloped me. And Tim Reed, we're like this. Now, see, I forgot about him. Me and him and his wife, we're like that. We're tight. Yeah, I was going to ask you about him. Very, um, we're very close. Yeah. Yep, I just saw her. She came to see me because I had a little uh, knee surgery. I was like, Lord, it happened to me. She's like, uh-uh, come here. We're going to do this. I mean, it's, it's so nice to have people who, right there. Every time you need them, you call them, they come, you know. You also had little Marcus Houston on there when, when he was a little guy. No, I haven't seen him anywhere. Really? Anywhere. I don't know. You know, he's living his life. He got married, got a baby. Yep. But I haven't seen him. But I show, I'm sure when I see him, it'll be cool. He's another one. He's always the same, you know. Yeah, you have worked around so many young people who have gone on to do amazing things in their career. Yeah. You really, really have. And it's, it's interesting because, like I said, 227 was huge for you. But sister to sister, it it turned Bigger. out yeah. to be... <laughs> Even even bigger. I mean, you, you you guys did something like 116 episodes? Six years. So I don't know how many that is, but who knew? I didn't even, that's what I'm telling you. I don't look at myself. Even now, I don't look at my accolades and go, mm. Uh, but I'm proud. And I, But I like to see new things. You know, I like this young lady. What's her name? Quinta Brunson. She does the Abbott Elementary. 
I had no idea she was a writer before this for Saturday Night Live. She can, she's been writing for years. People know her. I didn't. Oh, of her, you know, like Shonda Rhimes, you know, and I'm just singling out women now. I'm a feminist, by the way. Hate to use the label, but that's what I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before they even use the word. Uh, because it takes courage to be successful uh, when you're a woman. Because you got to do it all. I'm sorry. The weight is there. The baby, the husband, and the career. If you got it, do it. And don't be crying. I don't have any empathy about that. Do it or don't. But if you choose to just stay at home, that's cool, too. But later on, you'll find if you learn a little bit more, you can be more productive because somebody could die, get sick, whatever. You still got to keep keep it moving. It, it matters up here and in here. The heart mm -hmm. is important. I would nurture the heart more if I were younger again. I would nurture my heart a little bit more. <laughs>